Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Worship You service today. We gather on this a very special Sunday in our church calendar and in our church traditions. We come as we celebrate the risen Christ and the empty tomb. And as we come on this Resurrection Easter Sunday, we greet each other with a very special greeting. I'm going to put it on the screen. I'm going to ask that you help me with it as we, we greet each other with this greeting now. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And we respond, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us say it again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We respond, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So friends, as we come and we remember the risen Christ, as we come and we celebrate today, we come and we remember the empty tomb. And it's in that space that we come and we worship God. We lift up our hearts and on all of who we are to the risen Christ in this moment. So to get us going with our time of worship, we're going to be singing together because he lives. Friends, let us worship the risen Christ as we sing together now. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth living just because he Friends, welcome again to our Easter Resurrection service today. As we gather in this moment, we, we gather as the children of God as we celebrate the risen Christ. Welcome. Friends, if you're new and you're not quite sure who I am, my name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahali Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to welcome you to our service as we gather in this space as brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to invite you to participate in our service as you feel comfortable. Welcome. Friends, as we join together in this moment of worship, we come and we remember the risen Christ, the one who is with us in this moment and time. With that in mind, we, we come to our opening prayers. And during these times of opening prayers, I'm going to leave a space and I'm going to invite you to, to lift up your prayers to God as well as we come to our risen Lord today. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise that you have risen Christ from the grave. That as we come and we celebrate this resurrection, this healing and transformation that it brings into our lives, we come and we're mindful that you are with us, that your spirit journeys with us, that Christ goes with us and has made a way for us to come back to you. So friends, I want to invite you in this moment of quiet to, to lift up your prayers to God, prayers of thanksgiving and of adoration. Friends, lift up your prayers.
Father, you are worthy of all praise. Christ, you have come and brought us back into a relationship with Christ, with Almighty God. And we thank you that you have made a way. It's with that in mind that we, we come and we lift up to you our prayers of confession of sin as well. For we know that, that we have journeyed through this life and this world. And there are things that we have said, things we have done that have broken community with you and with others. We know that you've paid the price and that we can find forgiveness as we ask. So mighty God, we come with these our prayers. Friends, I want to invite you in the moment of quiet to lift up your prayers of confession of sin to God. We thank you, mighty God, that as we lift up these our prayers to you, you hear them. That we hear in return the, the words of grace, your sins are forgiven, go and sin no more. And we receive those words, mighty God, because we know that you have made a way through Jesus Christ, the one who has overcome our sin and death, for us to come back into relationship with you. So we thank you, mighty God, and we, we pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit to continue to strengthen us as we seek to turn away, to repent of the sin in our lives and to turn back to you. Strengthen us, we pray, for we ask that your help in this journey. And as we worship you this morning, guide us and direct us. For we ask this in your name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying it also with you, Raymond. So friends, as we gather in this moment as brothers and sisters in this e-service this morning, we join with our brothers and sisters who are joining in person in our church sites, as well as those who are joining and will be joining later today through our live streaming service as well. As we join in this place, we pass the peace to each other because we become peacemakers in the spaces and places in which we find ourselves. As we receive the peace of Christ, we need to pass that peace into our families, into our communities and into our world as well. Friends, as we continue to journey together in the service, we become co-journeyers. As we go on in this space and we come and we worship God together in community with one another. To show that sign of community, we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the kingdom prayer, the, the Lord's prayer, as we pray together. Now I'm going to be praying in English and I want to invite you to pray in whichever language is easiest on your tongue. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So friends, as we continue to worship today, we, we lift up our hearts to God as we worship together through singing, give thanks with a grateful heart. Friends, let us worship God now. Say I am 
rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. We give thanks. Friends, as we come to our notices today, I want to commend our notices to your reading. You will find them within the video description of this video. They've also been made available on our WhatsApp info groups. Friends, I want to simply ask that you read through them so that you're aware of what's taking place in our community of faith at this time. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank those who continue to give so generously into the life of our communities of faith at this time. As you give all your tithes and offerings to God, we as the church receive them and we use it for the furtherment of the ministry and mission of our churches to sustain the ministry and the costs related with ministry, as well as the mission as we seek to reach out, particularly in this abnormal time, to a world in need, to take the news of a risen Christ, of the one who brings healing and transformation, of the one who finds us in the spaces and places we are through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and empower us to reach out and love to the world around us. So friends, with that in mind, we, we come and commit our giving to God. Now, if you're joining us today and you're from another community of faith, I'd like to encourage you to give into your community of faith. They need you to give as much as we need our members to give into our communities of faith at this time to support the ministry and mission of our various church churches and denominations at this time as well. Friends, if you're struggling to give, please note that we are having in-person worship services. You're more than welcome to uh, take your tithes and offerings to the church that way. Alternatively, you can get hold of me or one of the leaders from the society in which you find yourself and will gladly assist you in getting your tithes and offerings into the life of our church. With that said, let's commit our giving and the business of our church to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the one who has loved us. You are the one who continues to journey with us in the spaces and places we find ourselves. For you bring hope, healing and transformation in those spaces. Strengthen us, almighty God to be able to be your church as we give out of love for you and in response to what you're continually doing in our lives we ask that you receive our love gifts today almighty god and use them for the furtherment of your kingdom through the sustaining work of your church and and reaching out in mission guide us as your church as we seek to reach out to the world around us to bring healing and transformation through the preaching of god, the gospel of jesus christ to present the risen christ in an empty tomb to the world at this time so strengthen us, Almighty God, as only you can. Hear these our prayers, for we ask this all in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. So friends, as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God today, we come and we sing, we, we worship God, we lift our hearts to the risen Christ as we sing in Christ alone. Let us worship God, friends. Our second worship song for this morning is in Christ alone.
Friends, as we come to the Word of God today, this our Resurrection Easter Sunday service, we come and we, we gather around scriptures that speak about an empty tomb and a risen Christ. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John, and I'm going to be reading from John 20, verses 1 to 18. If you have a Bible nearby, I'd like to encourage you to, to open your Bible and to follow with me as we go through John 20, verses 1 to 18. I'm also going to make the words on the uh, available on the screen. There we go. Friends, our, our reading today is from the contemporary English version of the Holy Bible. And it reads as follows from John 20 verses 1 to 18. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They've taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. 
The disciple who got there first then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scriptures said Jesus would rise to life. So the two of them went back to the other disciples. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside the tomb. She was still weeping when she stooped down and saw two angels inside. They were dressed in white and were sitting where Jesus' body has been. One was at the head and the other was at the foot. The angels asked Mary, why are you crying? She answered, they have taken away my Lord's body. I don't know where they have put him. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know who he was. Jesus asked her, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you've taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabuni. The Aramaic word Rabuni means teacher. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet gone to the Father. But tell my disciples that I am going to the one who is my Father and my God as well as your father and your God. Mary Magdalene then went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She also told them what he had said to her. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come to your holy scriptures today, on this very special day in which we encounter your resurrection in an empty tomb, As we come on this Resurrection Sunday, Almighty God, we we ask that you'd open our eyes and our hearts to receive from you what it is you're wanting to say to us. Speak into our hearts and our lives, Almighty God. Guide and direct us, we pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Rock and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. Friends, over the past week, we've journeyed with Jesus. We encountered Jesus last Sunday at Palm Sunday, and we've journeyed through those Hosanna cries of the royal procession into Jerusalem. We said, Hosanna, 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 blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We we then journeyed with Jesus through the events of Holy Week, through Jesus being anointed by Mary, through this peculiar glory that that Jesus shares with his disciples, through the the betrayal, through Jesus humbling himself to that of a servant as he he takes off his outer cloak, wraps a towel around himself and washes his disciples' feet in humility as as someone who has come gently and in humility to lead and to serve and showing the disciples that, that this is the way of love, humility. And by that love, they will know you are my disciples. Through Jesus sharing the the Passover meal with his friends in that moment, we then journeyed through the the journey towards the arrest and the trials. Friends, on Good Friday, we remembered the the moments that led to the cross and on the cross as we we journeyed the Via Dolorosa. And as we came in that moment, we we encountered what the meaning of Good Friday is truly about, as Jesus is the one who makes it good. Friends, we encountered ultimately the death of Jesus upon the cross at Golgotha for you, for me, and for all people. Friends, this week we, we have journeyed with Jesus towards his death, and Jesus died on Good Friday for you, for me, and for all people. It's with this in mind that we come today, friends. We've seen Jesus taken off the cross and put in a tomb, and the tomb sealed. Today, as we come, we we celebrate an unexpected event, an event that, that shouldn't naturally happen, an empty tomb and a risen Christ. Friends, we know what to expect because we've been through Easter so many times before. We know how the story ends. But friends, 
When something completely unexpected happens to you, how do you respond? Do you either fight or flight? What is your natural inclination? Do you, do you freeze? Panic? Stress? Or do you fight back? Do you run away? Abandon it? Or do you fight in that moment? Perhaps you're, you're one of those gifted individuals who, who can think on their feet very quickly and make a plan in that moment as well. Well, our reading today from the Gospel of John gives us a glimpse into the world recorded in the Bible. How Mary and the disciples handled this unexpected absence. Friends, our, our reading starts very early on the first morning of the week. We're told that, that on Sunday morning, Mary and some of the women were going to the tomb to pay their final respects to Jesus and give him a proper burial by preparing his body properly for death. As Mary and the woman approach the tomb, coming to it with an expectation of finding the lifeless body of Jesus in a sealed tomb, perhaps in their minds thinking, how are we going to move that stone out of the entrance? Perhaps grieving the loss and remembering their memories of Jesus in the year of years of ministry that they have followed Jesus. Mary and the woman came expecting to face death. They came prepared with spices and wrappings and, and everything to find death. Friends, as they approached the tomb, they found that, that something unexpected had happened. That the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb was open. As they took a look, they see that Jesus' body is missing. It's gone. So Mary responds to this unexpected find by running to tell the disciples. She tells Peter and John, and they in turn turn and run back to the tomb. They come and find it just as Mary had said, empty. Jesus' body is gone, and all that is left in that space are strips of linen and the burial cloth that had been Jesus, over Jesus' face. Friends, Peter and the, John come expecting to face death, to encounter the dead body of Jesus. But they find an unexpected absence. And as Peter responds, he, he runs into the tomb to check it out, to see for himself the empty tomb. Our reading tells us that he ran straight into it, perhaps doing some sort of MacGyver move and, and ducking into the, into the tomb as he went in. We're told that the other disciple that had got there first, John, doesn't immediately go inside, but takes time, perhaps preparing himself for, for what he will find, to, to encounter the death of Jesus yet again and be reminded of Jesus' death in that moment in time. It's so after this preparing himself to encounter death, that, that he goes inside and finds the empty tomb. The, the strips of grave clothes there with a cloth that was over Jesus' face rolled up and put one side. Friends, as both disciples have a look, perhaps spend time lingering there, they leave despondent. Perhaps they assume, and quite rightly so, that the final indignity had happened. Somebody had stolen Jesus' dead body. As they all encounter an unexpected absence on that first morning of Easter. Mary and the woman and the, and the disciples who went to take a look. Friends, perhaps there are times in our lives when we feel or find an unexpected absence in our lives. Perhaps as we celebrate Easter today, we have a loved one who is missing. A loved one who perhaps has passed away over the past year Maybe due to COVID-19 or, or other causes. Maybe someone who has immigrated to another country. Perhaps the loneliness of, of national lockdown that has, has been with us for over a year now. And the many things that we have lost over this past year. Perhaps people are still self-isolating out of fear of COVID-19. Then the third wave and the, and the various variants of the COVID-19 pandemic. Perhaps we, we have an unexpected absence in our lives of our hope that we had. And we found hopelessness has crept in. Loss of a hope of a future. Loss of economic opportunities, of employment, of a, of a failed company and a business. Friends, the list can go on of those things that we, we find that are missing. And that unexpected absence in our lives at this moment in time. 
Friends, where in your life have you an unexpected absence? Something that, that isn't as it should be because something is missing. Just spend a moment thinking about that. What's missing? Perhaps even when it comes to God, God may seem missing to you in this moment in which you find yourselves. But our reading doesn't end there. In verse 11, we, we are told that Mary continues to linger at the tomb, crying. Perhaps out of, out of a deep grief at the loss of Jesus, and now this unexpected turn of events, digging out those, those emotions and just re-entrenching them in her heart regarding Jesus and his dead body. I'm not talking about a simple tear rolling down a cheek. I'm talking about that heart-wrenching weeping. But we're told that Mary lingers. And as she lingers, she, she sees angels that were where Jesus' body was as she looks into the tomb. And it's in that moment that she sees another person that appears. And she assumes that, that this person is the gardener. She doesn't recognize this person in this moment. And our reading tells us that she says to him, Sir, if you've taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus says to her, and hear these words, friends, Mary. Jesus calls her by name, friends. It's in this, to this moment of unexpected absence, into this moment of grief and loss, that Jesus calls Mary by name. She call, he calls her by name, knowing Mary. It's in that space that that she responds in startled recognition. And I can imagine that in this moment, she, she, she's surprised. W what is going on? Jesus? I can imagine her clinging to Jesus in that moment. And she turns and says to him, Rabunai, which means teacher in Aramaic. It's in that space, friends, that we, we come, like Mary, to encounter afresh the Christ. Friends, we, we know that the story with God does not end on Friday at the cross, as many expected. Jesus dead and buried. We come today and we celebrate the risen Christ who shows up. I want to say it again, friends. We come and we celebrate the risen Christ who shows up, transforming our painful sense of absence by his presence. The steadfast love of, the God, of God refuses to leave us. God is with us. That resurrection presence is with us, bringing transformation into our lives, our situations, our moments, as God calls us by name, as Christ calls out to us by name, Raymond or, or whatever your name is in this moment, because God's steadfast love refuses to leave us. Friends, just as, as Jesus found Mary crying at the empty tomb, and he asked her, woman, why are you crying? We don't have to go looking for Jesus. Jesus is looking for us. We don't have to go search to find him as he did with Mary. He finds us, and he knows us by name, just as he knew Mary by name in that moment in time. He knows our situations and our circumstances at this time better than we do. The scriptures tell us that he knows the number of hair upon our heads, friends. That's how intimately God knows us. Perhaps even the intricacies of our situation beyond what we know. Christ shows up. So friends, as I close today, I want to ask you, what is your great hope in life? In death, in, in life beyond death. Is it that the same Savior, the, the risen Christ who showed up to Mary, will show up in our living, in every moment of our living and in our dying? That he'll keep showing up, often when we least expect it. So friends, as we come to this Easter, we remember the risen Christ, the unexpected absence, and we celebrate an empty tomb and a risen Christ. But let us always remember that our risen Christ often works in unexpected ways. Like Mary, who, who didn't at first recognize Jesus, 
So too, we may not recognize at first what Jesus is doing until Jesus calls out to us in that space. Jesus shows up when we least expect him to. So friends, he has risen. He has risen indeed. Happy Easter. Christ is not only risen. He has risen indeed because Christ showed up. Friends, I'd like to invite you today and in the week that, that, that leads from today, As we enter into a 50-day season of Easter, I want to invite you today and in the week that lies ahead, just to spend a moment reflecting on these words. Christ is not risen. He's risen indeed. What does it mean for us in our lives to embrace an unexpected absence? In other words, what is missing? What painful moments do we need to bring the resurrection life, the the restoring life of Christ that brings transformation and healing into our lives, into our families, into our communities, and into our world? And then lift those up to God in prayer. Because it's in that moment that Jesus works in unexpected ways, showing him up when we least expect him to in those moments and situations. Because Christ always shows up. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, as we celebrate an empty tomb, that death is defeated, that sin is overcome, that we can encounter you afresh, O Christ. Receive you and your, your resurrection power, your transforming life with us in this moment afresh. We come and we say thank you that you are with us. That you continue to bring healing and transformation into the areas of our unexpected absences. Those things that are missing are strange and unconcerning in our lives. So Father, we come to you and we ask more of you now. As we celebrate the risen Christ. As we embrace you afresh as our Lord and our Savior. The one who has overcome sin and death and risen again. We come and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, help us to hear what we need to hear from the sermon today. Guide us in all that we need to do to put into practice in our lives as we seek to grow closer to you and allow your transforming and healing power into our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name, now and always. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word of God and and celebrate the risen Christ, the, the one who meets us on the unexpected spaces of our lives, the one who shows up, We sing together, Jesus Messiah. I want to invite you to lift your heart up in response to what God has done in the risen Christ activity in our lives as we sing Jesus Messiah together. Let us worship God in this moment, friends. Jesus. 
Jesus Messiah. So friends, as we come to an end of our service today, let us continue to celebrate the risen Christ in the empty tomb. Let us continue to embrace the Christ who shows up, the one who meets us in unexpected ways in those spaces of absence in our lives. I want to encourage you to take this Christ to to the world around you, to your family, to your friends, as we celebrate Easter today. May you know that presence of Christ with you. Friends, if you need any pastoral care, you know where to get a hold of me. My contact details are found within the video description in our notices. Simply reach out. I'm here for you at this time as well. Friends, be blessed. Stay safe. And I'm going to invite you to say with me this, this benediction as we share it with each other as we close our time together. So we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe, and continue to embrace the risen Christ, who is always with you, now and always. Amen.